Hello, Tina. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm sorry, it took me a few extra moments to get here. I had a bit of a problem with a uh, mortal. <laughs> okay, I understand. I have lots of problems with mortals. Yes, that's why we get along so good. <laughs> uh, this is Tina with the Vision and Vintage Co. I have a channel on YouTube. Um, basically, it's a thrifting channel. I enjoy all things odd and curious, um, but I also enjoy Halloween and horror. And for as many years as I can remember, I have enjoyed watching horror movies. As a teenager, my girlfriend and I, on a Saturday night, that's what we would do. We would hang out at the video store and try to find as many selections as we could to bring home and, and watch that evening for fun. So there is a new channel on um, YouTube. He's just started. He's, he's got a handful of videos. But I think he is going to be big. And I really enjoy um, his content, and I think you will too. Um, it's called Ehrlich the Gore Lord. And basically, he is a combination of um, kind of like a Siskel and Ebert, a little bit of Elvira, and a little bit of uh, the Crypt Keeper from the Creep Show. Um, if you like that type of stuff, then you're going to love his show. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce him. And here we go. Here's Ehrlich. Hello, Tina. It's nice to be with you. Can you give everybody a little bit of background of what your goal is on your YouTube channel and, and why you decided to do it? Of course. Well, you'd have to understand that uh, in light of this uh, viral outbreak uh, people seem a bit starved for new content and i found myself willing to help so i have emerged from the depths of the underworld at least to make these lovely little videos on the subject of horror and i've decided to give them something a bit different definitely different and that's why i like it so much and it is definitely a throwback, I think. So I think a lot of people that are my generation, some earlier, maybe a little later, are probably going to really enjoy your content because, you know, you do poke fun, a lot of fun at some of these videos, things that most people probably would not recognize you point out in some of these videos. And some of them, <laughs> you wonder why, why didn't I notice that? Well, I appreciate that. I, I try to take it from a unique angle. And I mean, if you can't have fun with something, then what good is it to you, right? I still love these films. I don't think I would dare review something I loathed. But, you know, it's uh, you have to have fun and take it all with, a, as you mortals say, a grain of salt. Mm-hmm. So how do you choose the movies that you you review? Well, I've got quite the extensive collection where I'm at. And so we, oftentimes, myself and my netherworld minions, uh, something will come up in a conversation or a reprimanding of sorts. And it'll be like, uh, ah, I recall from this movie where someone was tortured this way or something <laughs> the like and usually it comes out of deviant behavior but we'll just leave that one there yeah, yeah i found you um on an instagram post and i it was um it wasn't your post it was someone else um you know a supporter of yours um and i can't remember who it was but I seen seen it and I clicked on it immediately 
And um, I was just really uh, tickled to death with your content. I just think you're doing a fabulous job. And I really feel like you're going to take off. I mean, you're really going to take off. And I would not be surprised if, you know, you you just grow and grow and grow to the point where, you know, you're going to have 10,000 plus subscribers probably within a year, maybe more. I graciously appreciate that. And I hope so. I, uh, because after all, what, what good is a little devil without followers? You know, I'd, I'd like to influence the young and corrupt the masses and turn everyone <laughs> on to the uh, uh, entertainment value found within vintage order. So, okay. but I appreciate the kind words and, you know, it's... It's, it's a bit of fun. We, the channel has only been out for about a week. I think today is the one week anniversary, actually. Uh, we've launched three videos and have one more we'll, we are filming tomorrow. And uh, I'm doing the first of many top tens here soon as well. And I'm going to get a bit clever with the top tens. I'm also going to be doing what I call... Uh, I guess death matches, matchups. I haven't picked a name yet, but uh, I'm going to profile different characters within horror monsters and final girls and all kinds of different uh, character types within the horror and do comparisons and do a little bit of a in depth film analysis, a series I'm going to call Deep Cuts, and where I will take a very serious look at certain films and their cultural and uh, maybe political or, or uh, their relevance within the culture on many fronts. Just take a deep, deep, deep cut into that. Yes. That's a good name for it. Definitely a good name for it. And uh, I had a, a, a few questions for you too. I mean, where did you come up with the whole I mean, how, I mean, it, it's not every day somebody just decides to dress up like this and just do this. <laughs> where did, where were you? How were you inspired? Well, I, how shall I say this? I, I've spent many a year invested in the horror culture and uh, darker cinema, and I'm old, so I'm well aware of the, the greats the, from the the network TV horror hosts of yesteryear, like you mentioned as well, Elvira and the Crypt Keeper and so on and so forth. Uh, those are all characters that mean something to me as well. And so I took a look around and I noticed on YouTube, with a couple of exceptions, there's not much by way of horror hosts. And certainly no one with a face like this so i decided that uh it's something i can get away with when looking so ghastly and uh, i decided to take some of these vintage films and perhaps remind people uh, who have seen them before and then turn them on to a whole new generation and some of these youngsters don't don't know these older films and they don't know the ins and outs of character development or a slow build into a climax it's uh how shall i say it's a quick eruption with the young so I'm trying yeah, to instant gratification exactly so i think maybe touching on some of these older films uh, gives them a sense of what came before and if they can stomach not having a on-screen kill every 39 seconds and there might be something to appreciate even in the grisly ones you know my first one was uh, blood sucking freaks which is a film that not just anyone can watch it's quite disturbing and you know, so I'm, I'm setting the bar pretty high. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I just, I mean, they redid Freddy Krueger, and they redid, I mean, I don't know how many uh, Jasons they've had, and Halloween and all that, but are you planning on covering ones like that, or are you going to go more geared towards the ones that weren't so much in the spotlight? 
Oh, no, I will be touching on the unholy trinity of Freddy Krueger, Michael Myers, and Jason Voorhees definitely in doing a whole series of possession films and uh, and on to a whole different uh, variety of of different things. I'm, I'm starting with the B-movies because less people know who I am at this point. And if it would be a pity to do a film, you know, to do a video now on a film like The Nightmare on Elm Street, and then it's one of the ones that in the big scheme of things doesn't get the same views once you get an audience. So I'm starting a bit simple. And plus I can, since nobody's really watching yet, I can kind of get away with uh, touching on films that might get me a uh, a strike or a lash down the road. So. Monetized. <laughs> yes. No, commit the crime when you know you can get away with it. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I understand what you're coming from. Yeah, I'm I'm over a thousand subscribers now, but I haven't actually uh went through the steps to get monetized because i don't feel like i have a big enough following to even you know to even bother with it at this point but yeah that's definitely something uh that you're going to have to look into because i have a feeling it's not going to be long before you're going to have quite a few followers so well, i appreciate that I, I think what i'm probably going to do i've i've begun setting up a page on patreon and uh that's one way to get a, a few uh, ducats in the tip jar, as you say, without needing to go through the act of monetizing only to be demonetized and struck down. So I may avoid that altogether. I haven't decided yet, but I appreciate your encouragement. It's, it's very heartwarming. Thank you. Yeah. So what was the first horror movie that you ever seen as a child that really i should say impressed you or put it made an impression on you either good or bad uh dracula was the first with bela lugosi he warmed my devilish heart that day. <laughs> then i saw a lot of the universal films first uh dracula and frankenstein and the uh, mummy and the wolfman and uh, those were the ones that you know us little devils were allowed to watch you know and by the time I was prepubescent uh, horror had gotten a lot more grisly and I was sneaking away with older devils to consume films that would have driven mommy and daddy crazy at the thought of me viewing <laughs> Yeah, I remember as a child, that was me too. I was, I, I was definitely, um, you know, taken with, with Dracula, Frankenstein, um, you know, the mummy, creature from the Black Lagoon, um, all of that, the universal monsters for sure. And I remember going to bed at night with my duck light on. I had to have my duck light on and I had to be covered up all the way to here because I didn't want Dracula to come in at nighttime and suck my blood. <laughs> yes. I had the opposite problem. I, he, I begged and begged and he never came. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I was scared to death. I mean, I loved it, but at the same time, at nighttime, when it was time to go to bed, I was scared to death. And it didn't help that we lived across the street from a cemetery. So that kind of added to the whole you know, the whole thing. Well, some of you mortals have all the luck, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my dad used to tease me because we had a basement, and he would tell me, you know, you're right at the same level. If you had x-ray vision, you would be able to look across and see the... <laughs> <laughs> so he used to scare the crud out of me with that kind of stuff. But yeah. yeah. I did. I, I enjoyed the heck out of it, but at the same time, it scared the heck out of me, too. So, yeah. Oh, I understand. I, this was your daddy that did this to you. Oh, yeah. I'd like to meet him. <laughs> yeah, he used to love terrorizing me. I mean, it, it, he would get a kick out of it. Yeah. 
wonderful man. <laughs> I'm sure. Well, he raised a wonderful daughter, so. Thank you. I will go easy on your soul when you get here. Okay, I appreciate it. Yeah. Now, um, when uh, The Exorcist came out, yeah, that was that was uh, one heck of a film for sure. And um, I remember my mom and dad watching it in the living room. And I was just, you know, I was a little kid. And why I decided to come in there, I have no idea. But I had one of those crocheted blankets over my head and occasionally peering through one of the holes <laughs> to, to watch the film. But it that made a huge impression on me and scared me half to death. So oh, what- Oh, yes, yes, indeed. That When I first saw that film, I, uh, it inspired me. Some of us cannot attain uh, such greatness, but uh, it was definitely a- um, one of the most unique uh, films ever made, uh, not limited to horror, but even at the, you know, overarching uh, sense of drama. That was a, quite the uh, humane story, really. And, uh, you know, a very misunderstood film as well. So much emphasis put on the character of Reagan and so little put on the transformation within Father Caris, but that's that conversation could go on for hours, I'm sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Did you did you like the Twilight Zone? That was that one that you liked a lot, or Alfred Alfred Hitchcock? Kind oh of thing? yes, uh, Hitchcock for sure, and the Twilight Zone very much. But I actually liked uh, Rod Serling's other show, Night Gallery, a lot more. It was so much darker, more visceral. Uh, are you familiar with that one? It's, it's not ringing a bell. You should look it up. I'm going to have to look it up. If you like the Twilight Zone and you appreciate the oddities, as you say, I think you'll find that one very enjoyable. Yes, um, that TV show that was on for a while, Oddities, um, when that came on, that is kind of what sparked my intrigue and interest in all of the odd, um, you know, skulls and bones and, and medical equipment and things of that nature. So that's kind of that show that sparked my interest in that to begin with. But I guess it was always there. It just needed something to bring it out. Uh, yes, we, we find inspiration awfully in the strangest places. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. Well, do you have any anything you would like to add? Any kind of closing information that you would like your future viewers to know or your current viewers to know well, about? You? Yes, and thank you. Uh, the channel is called Eric the Gore Lord. And uh, you can find it in my Instagram bio if you follow me on there. Uh, new videos weekly, at least one, sometimes two. And uh, we've only just begun. So step into the darkness and spend some time with the silly old devil. <laughs> I love your character. And again, I think you're going to go places. And I advise everybody to... Um, definitely go and at least check him out and i guarantee that you're going to end up hitting that subscribe button so i appreciate you all being here thank you so much Erlich, for um you know agreeing to come on here with me and and uh, opening people up to the world of horror and uh, until next time guys see you later goodbye thank you tina you're welcome